So still right now in the manga, Eskener is getting pretty much his biggest fight in the series. A series where he's already gotten plenty of shine. I'm so sorry. And not too long ago, Nakaba finally hit us with the Eskener side story, which a lot of us have been waiting for for a while because they're all really enjoyable chapters and I'm really excited to see Merlin's as well. When it came to Escanor's backstory, a lot of us wanted to know more about Rosa. Merlin sends Escanor to the capital of the dead and they share a moment, but the chapter is mainly about how Escanor joined the sins, which I think everyone can agree is the smartest way to go with the chapter. I mean, we get to see the first time Meliodas and Escanor fought, which was something I didn't know I wanted, and it is mostly what this video is about. In one corner we have an unseasoned rookie Escanor, no sacred treasure of course, and in the other corner we have a full power Meliodas, who just goes fucking assault mode, which really makes me wonder if he could do that anytime, then why didn't he do that when he was getting back alley lynched by the Ten Commandments and got fucking killed. You, but you hesitated, you thought about I it. I didn't first. hesitate, because that shouldn't have been the question. In a way, this does put to bed the Meliodas versus Escanor discussion. Still, I gotta do this topic some justice. It's gonna be good, and we're all gonna have fun! A lot of people just take this topic at face value, but I actually think it can get pretty in-depth. I'm of course gonna break down the fights and the matchup, but first, I wanna refresh on some power levels for the kitties. These aren't everything, but they do give you a perspective. As many of us know, Meliodas goes through four different phases of power throughout the series. There's his sealed phase. This lasted from basically the moment the sins were framed. Of course, through the Holy Night Saga, ending in the Istar arc when he gets his powers back. Then there's the full-powered Meliodas. I use that term loosely. This was his power around the time the sins were first formed and when his powers are unsealed in the Istar arc. This amount of power used to be too much for Meliodas to control whenever his emotions got the best of him. He went berserk and completely destroyed Danafall and there's a chance he would have destroyed Leonas if Merlin had not snatched his powers. After he gets them back, he fights at this level of power until he's killed by Esterosa. Then there's his post-revival power, which is way higher because anime. This is Meliodas unhindered by his emotions which are sort of like his human side. I think this is what his strength was like before he met Elizabeth, but this was just a really weird power jump for him. It was cool, but all we know is after Meliodas is revived, his base strength is way greater than it previously was. Then there's his post-purgatory strength. After he regains control of his body from the Demon King, and this Meliodas is on a completely different level than the previous phases, which I will explain in a little bit. For Escanor, while we have a reading of him at his weakest point, and one just moment before he enters the One State, regardless, it's just impossible to calculate the rate in which Escanor's power level increases because the rate it increases is not consistent. But if it did grow five points a second, like many people believe, if it increased that rate for 12 hours, it'd put Eskiner's max power level over 216,000. But regardless, in one of the fan books, Nakaba stated that Eskiner's power level is immeasurable. But Nakaba pretty much gave up on showing Eskiner and really all the other characters' power levels, because some of these characters, you can't put numeric values on their abilities, especially the invincibility of the one. This fight had me completely perplexed how it would go down so different, especially with Meliodas' strength being less than it was in their fight in the corn arc that he lost. Zeldris believes Meliodas was holding back, but that does not make up for the huge power gap we witnessed in their first fight. Then the chapter where Escanor shows a new form, he said some stuff. Meliodas is basically the one who helped Escanor learn how to control his sunshine ability, which kind of makes sense in a way. Meliodas also has immense power he has to keep under control and has gone berserk as well. So pretty much Escanor was weaker than Meliodas before he learned how to use sunshine. I don't think anyone will debate that. Actually learning how to use sunshine and receiving Rita has made him more effective in combat. The last 12 years is what put him on par with characters like Meliodas. But regardless, Escanor for that one minute is invincible. Merlin said it herself when the one is first revealed. And at the time of the first fight between Meliodas and Escanor, Merlin says his powers peak at noon. And the only way she could know that is if his powers started to fall off, meaning his invincibility as the one has wore off, although for a moment, he retained the appearance of the one. Now a huge factor that I feel like a lot of people overlook, especially when it comes to this matchup, is the regenerative abilities of the demons, more specifically Meliodas. Why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't really points to there being a region limit. Seems like it's linked to how much power they have. That black aura, the power of darkness, 
is what they use to regenerate and it seems it's relying on them to activate it in a sense to heal sustained damage is it inconsistent kind of i don't really know i just know characters love to slice off meliodas arm he just slaps it back on like it's a hat now eskinor's mistake in the first time they fought aside from fighting after his powers have peaked notice how eskinor goes for an uppercut on meliodas a more experienced eskinor in the one form goes for more decisive attacks like divine sword and divine spear attacks that would be more difficult for Meliodas to recover from. Also, since Eskinor only landed one hit, he didn't have Meliodas take enough damage in a short amount of time to offset his regeneration. If the fight had started earlier, even by a minute, not only would Meliodas be unable to offset the one's invincibility, but Meliodas himself would have sustained more damage. But really, when comparing the power of these two characters, there's the factor of Meliodas at certain points over the years, and since we're discussing present day Eskinor, then just him throughout the day. So, unsealed Meliodas sits at a base 32,500. That's definitely not his peak, of course. Yeah, it surpasses some of the weaker commandments like Galland and Fraudrin, but that's about it. We've seen Eskinor get up to 28,000 at night with just power stored in Rita. Now when activating Meliodas Demon Mark mode, it brings him up to 56,000. This along with releasing his sacred treasure, also full counter making it more difficult for Escanor to spam Cruel Sun. This would give Escanor some trouble for a bit. For comparison, Esterosa's base was 60,000. Esterosa got some good hits in, but about halfway through the fight, Escanor's power level had definitely exceeded Esterosa's, and by the end, he had him completely outclassed. Definitely using more power than his fight with Galen, but it does say both of those fights happen close to noon. We can assume that'd be within a couple hours, so I believe this is around the time where that full power or unsealed Meliodas using the demon mark would become overpowered by Escanor. And looking at the other readings we've gotten on Escanor, it's no surprise Meliodas considered Escanor as being stronger than him. When it comes to post-revival Meliodas, we know that Assault Mode can beat Escanor at any time of the day except noon on the dot. But I also mentioned earlier how Zelders believes Meliodas was was holding back in their fight in the Korin arc, which I agree with. He wasn't taking the fight seriously and got careless. In that arc, Escanor was put in the ideal situation to fight Meliodas. I was waiting for the right moment and that was the right moment. But not enough people really talk about how Meliodas' final form the Demon King form would fare. Let's look at the facts. You can't KO the one, but if you are powerful enough, like deity level, like the Demon King, you can hold him off, which the Demon King did, leading Escanor to go ultimate, but that's at the cost of your life, so at best it's like a draw. Anyways, Meliodas Demon King is pretty much deity level. He broke a curse placed by the Demon King himself. I truly believe Meliodas in that form could go toe to toe with the one because post Purgatory Meliodas is really on a different level than before. Purgatory didn't make him more powerful in the same vein as Bon because Meliodas physical body wasn't present but mentally he is a thousand years older and more experienced from his time in purgatory. And in the final battle it's really apparent that Meliodas is on a different level than he was previously. First off they don't say it but it seems the time he spent absorbing the commandments must have had some lasting effect on his power that made him capable of a new form because it looked very similar to when he absorbed all the commandments and the Demon King possessed his body. Even though people didn't like how Nakaba revealed Meliodas' Demon King form, when Nakaba was acting like the manga was about to end and he was ready to have Meliodas break the curse on Elizabeth, the safe bet was to have Meliodas do it in a new form because it's an easy way to show the reader that he's reached a new level. It just makes sense that Meliodas' final form could last a minute against the one, thus giving Meliodas the advantage in the fight overall. But let me know what you guys think. Put any thoughts you have in the comment section below. I have more Sins content on the way and other things. Thank you very much for watching. It's been really real. I'll praise the sun. I'll talk to you next one. Peace.